So we're going to talk a little bit about functions. And before we start, um, I think this picture at the top gives you a good idea of what a function does. So um, here I say I have my function, right? It's a box. And what happens is I'm going to plug in some values of x, right, into my function. My function is going to do some stuff, and it's going to churn out a y. So you're going to get a y out of your function. And then that's how graphs get formed. Um, basically, a graph is a xy pair that is made up of what you plugged into your function and what you got out, right? So we're going to do an example to just show exactly what this means. So let's say we have a function x squared, right? Well, what we're going to do is plug in a whole bunch of values for x and get some values of y, right? So let's try 1, for example. Well, if we look at our picture, it means we're going to plug in 1 into our function, right, and get a y. So I'm just going to plug in 1 here, and 1 squared is just 1. So my answer is my y, okay? So let's try x is 2. Same thing. We go to our function. We plug in x is 2, and 2 squared is 4. Right? And we get a bunch of values like this. So for 3, we would get 9. 4, we would get 16. And what we would do is go to our graph and plot these points. So I have this value 1, 1. So I'll plot that right there. And I have this plot 2, 4. So 2, 3, 4. And I plot that there. And so on. Right, And what you'd find is that the graph looks something... Uh, like this. It's a parabola, right? Um, and we could get that by doing other x values like negative 1, negative 2, and finding what those uh, points come out to as well. Okay? Um, so basically, it's all in this direction for the most part, right? We take an x, we put it into our function, and we get a y. And we um, use that x and y to then put it on a graph. Now the trick comes when you're trying to go the other way. So let's say, for example, I have this monster graph, all right? And let's say this is the function of f, uh, right? So this graph is the function of f. And now I ask you, what's f of negative 3? Well, Remember what this means. f of negative 3 means I'm plugging in negative 3 into my function. So I'm plugging in that x value, right? And what this is asking is what do I get when I plug in negative 3? So what is my y? Well, remember what a graph tells us. You only put a graph, uh, sorry, a point onto your graph if you got this y value when you plugged in that x value, right? So for example, on this graph, this is 2 comma 4. This tells me when I plugged in 2 into my function, it churned out a 4, right? So now if I go over here, I'm asking, what does my function churn out when x is negative 3, right? Well, if we look at our graph, we have this point. This point is x is negative 3 and y is 4. So that tells us when f, when we plug negative 3 into our function, we got a 4, right? That makes sense because the point negative 3 comma 4 is on our graph. So no matter what direction they're asking you about, right, whether they're asking you to take an x, plug it into your function, and get a y, right, or they give you a graph and they want you to know that the only points that are on that graph are x and y values that you plugged into your function and got um, this particular y, right? So the, all these points, right? This tells me that when I plugged in negative 5 into my function, I got 2. When I plugged in negative 3 into my function, I got 4. When I plugged in negative 1, I got 2, and so on, right? So all these are very, very powerful. They tell me when I plug in certain x values into my function, what do I get for y? And basically, that's all you need for functions, right? If you can remember this picture right here, it's very, very powerful. 
Um, so you just work in whatever direction and whatever information they give you.